Our scripture lesson is a very well-known scripture. It's the 23rd Psalm. If you want to turn in your Bibles to the 23rd Psalm. And you know, um, when you read a familiar scripture, sometimes it's easy for our minds just to kind of like sort of jump ahead. You know what I mean? Because you sort of know what it is. Now, this is going to be in the NIV, so it's going to maybe, maybe be in a, uh, a different version that we're used to um, reading together. But I just want to encourage you to listen this time and not anticipate and just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. These six verses are just full of meaning and, and just so full of wonderful insights. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. If you'll turn in your bulletins, there's a sermon outline inside there, a little yellow insert. There'll be some scripture verses we'll be looking at together. There was a little boy in Sunday school class, and he was drawing a, pic a picture. And the teacher said, what are you drawing? And the little boy replied, I'm drawing a picture of God. The teacher said, but nobody knows what God looks like. And the boy said, they will when I get through. <laughs> what we have in the 23rd Psalm is a picture of God. And I believe if we can get a hold of this picture, if we can place it in our hearts and really believe it, we will experience God in a transforming way. For the believer of Jesus Christ, Psalm 23 reads like an insurance policy. When you buy insurance, you might read the policy one time and then set it aside. Why? Because you know what is covered. If something is covered, you don't have to wonder about it anymore. That's why you have insurance. All six verses of Psalm 23 are like a clause in an insurance policy, and it covers all phases of our life. It covers every situation in life we might come up against, right up to death. My mother, Marguerite, was an amazing support system for me. She taught me what it meant to love someone. She loved me unconditionally. She poured her love into my life in so many ways. My mother died in 1993, and I have really been missing her lately. You might relate to that. With all the challenges we are facing here at Bristol, I just wish I could hear her sweet, sympathetic voice. She was always in my corner and had complete confidence in me. And you know, when I didn't have confidence in myself, I could always reach out to my mom because my mother had just complete confidence in me. When I struggled, she rarely had any ideas of what to do. She just loved me through it. But there was something else that was also true about my mom. She, she did not have a lot of education. She never graduated from high school. She never went to college. Yet, somehow, my mother had a PhD in worry. You know what I mean? When you're around someone 
who is a professional warrior, it begins to rub off, right? That's one of the things that, that comfort, comforts me so much about my mom. She has been freed from the shackles of worry. Amen? Amen? I can't wait to see her face free from life's worries. Do I have any professional warriors out there today? You know what I'm talking about. Do I have any professional warriors out here today? Do you worry about stuff too? One thing I learned about being a father is that little eyes and little ears comprehend more than you realize. Of course, when our daughter was younger, she might not have understood all the issues I was dealing with. And when Jenny and I would talk, thinking Sarah was distracted, you know, with her toys or simply not listening because she didn't listen to other stuff we said, right? (laughs) But... Our daughter was actually soaking up stuff like a sponge. And when she was about five years old or so, she was having a nosebleed, all right? It was one of those nosebleeds that reached a point where it seemed like it wasn't going to stop. It, it, it was probably only 30 seconds, but to me, it seemed like it was going on forever. And so I voiced my adult concern to Jenny when, when, when Sarah suddenly startled me in a clear, concise voice, she said, Dad, don't be a worry bug. <laughs> Ouch, wow, wisdom from your children. Do you have any worry bugs here? Do you have any worry bugs here? It's advice that all of us can use. I would say 99% of us of all of us here, spent some time in the past 24 hours worrying. So we're going to do a sermon on worry, right? Because I struggle with that, and maybe you do too. Okay, let's talk about worry. Let me say this about worry. Worry is unhelpful. Worry is unreasonable. And it is unhealthy. First, It is unhelpful because it never accomplishes anything. It never solves anything. It is stewing without doing. It is like racing your car engine with the car standing still. You know, we create a lot of smoke, a lot of noise, but you don't go anywhere. Worry has never solved a problem. Worry cannot change the past, although we worry about it. Worry cannot change the future, although we uh, worry about it. It only makes us miserable for today. Isn't that true? It's unhealthy. Gives us ulcers, headaches, insomnia. It doesn't work. It exaggerates our problems, making mountains out of molehills. It's unreasonable. It, It makes your... Problems look bigger and bigger. The more you examine a concern, the bigger it becomes. To worry about something you can't change is useless. To worry about something you can change is silly. Just change it. So, what is the solution to worry? Worry is a learned response. It can be unlearned. It is found in the first clause of our insurance policy. It is the first thing we see when we view this picture of God in Psalm 23. We start with the very first verse in Psalm 23, and that's what I want to concentrate on today. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. That's the New Century uh, Version translation. The King James says it this way. Let's read that one out loud together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A little, go- a little girl asked to recite Psalm 23, 1 says, The Lord is my chauffeur, I shall not walk. If I believe God is going to take care of me, then I'm not going to worry. How does making God my shepherd reveal the solution to stress? If the Lord is my shepherd, what does that have to do with worry? Well, you have to know what shepherds do, okay? 
he provides. One thing that a shepherd does is he provides food for his sheep, shelter for his sheep, basic necessity. A shepherd is a provider. Number two, he protects. He defends against enemies. He defends against poachers. He he protects his sheep. Number three, the duty of a shepherd is to guide. He guides and leads sheep when they are confused, when they don't know which way to go. He helps them to go this way or that way. And he corrects. Any problem that comes along, those are the four things a shepherd does. Provides, protects, guides, and corrects. The amazing thing is this. God has promised to do, to do those four things in your life if you put your trust in him. God is saying, I will provide, protect, guide, and correct you. This is what the Psalm 23 insurance policy says for the believer. This is a picture of who God is in the life of a believer. But the, but the Lord can't be your shepherd until the shepherd is your Lord. Let me say it again. The Lord can't be your shepherd until first the shepherd is your Lord. The two go together. Now, what does it mean to be Lord? The word Lord was widely understood and comprehended in the days of the Bible. Not so much today. We don't don't usually use that language too much today. It, It means to be in control. When someone is, if, if someone is, 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 is Lord in my life, it means that, that they are in control. It means to be the boss, the manager, the CEO, the editor, the, the, the chairman of the board, the president of your life. When we worry, it is a warning light that I am trying to control too much. Worry is always an attempt to control the uncontrollable. Worry is assuming responsibilities God never meant for you to have. And whenever you try to control the uncontrollable, you are going to worry. If you want to stop worrying, the secret is this. Pray about everything. Begin praying about the stuff you are worrying about. And you know, if you begin to do that, you know what happens? You spend a whole lot less time worrying. Because if you're praying, you can't worry while you're praying, okay? You can't do it. And so, if you begin to worry about something, replace that with prayer. Um, You see, when we worry, it is a warning light that I am trying to control too much. Worry is, is always an attempt to control the uncontrollable. Worry is... Assuming responsibilities God never meant for you to have. And whenever you try to control the uncontrollable, you are going to worry. Now, Philippians 4, verses 6 to 7, the Apostle Paul talks about this. Um, Because worry changes nothing... Prayer changes everything. Let's take a look at this in the New Living Translation. Let's read it out loud together. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. 
Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. Take a look at 1 Peter 5, verse 7. It's very, very clear here, very, very direct. It says, cast, Peter says, cast all your anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. Cast. That means to unload, to drop it. You you let it go. Prayer is an incredible stress reliever. Cast it all to him. The problem is most of us do our casting like we're fishing. We, we cast it out and we give it to God and then we reel it back in, right? Here, God, take my worries. Five minutes later, we're reeling it back in, right? When I was a newspaper reporter, we had a saying, what have you got for me today? You know, I may have had three page one stories yesterday, but every morning the editor wanted to know, Gary, what do you have for me today? You see, friends, God's guidance and strength is only enough for today. That's all we really need. The future can seem overwhelming, but God has put it into bite-sized pieces in 24-hour segments, and God says, live one day at a time. Here's a line in the Lord's Prayer that, that applies to us today. Give us today our daily bread. Overcoming worry is a day-to-day choice. There's no pill to take that will make you stop worrying. There's no seminar to attend that will make you stop worrying. There's no spiritual experience you can have that will, bam, make you stop worrying. The answer to worry is a daily choice an hourly choice, a moment-by-moment choice. Am I going to believe the Lord is my shepherd or am I going to believe I am my own Lord? Pray with me. God loves you. God cares about your stress. God can help you. Would you right now just tune out the people around you and repeat softly under your breath, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Say it like this. The Lord is my shepherd. There's only one Lord. All others are imitations. Say it this way. The Lord is my shepherd. Not might be He will be, he always has been, and always will be. Say it like this, the Lord is my shepherd. Can you say that with certainty? Is the Lord your shepherd? Is the shepherd your Lord? Can't be one without the other. When you can say that, 
you can stop worrying. Jesus Christ, I don't understand it all, but today I have seen your promise to take care of my needs if I trust you. And I realize worry is a warning light that I am trying to control everything. I don't want to do that anymore. I want you to control my life. I want you to be my manager. I want you to be my Lord. I want to know you. I want to listen to you. And I want you to lead me in the life plan you have made me for. Friends, with every eye closed, every head down, friends, if you've prayed that prayer today, would you just raise a hand? Thank you, thank you. There are people all around this room who have raised their hand. And for those who didn't raise their hand, would you just pray a prayer for them? Be an encouragement. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this picture of God that's found in the 23rd Psalm. We, We thank you that this is our insurance policy. We thank you for your promises. And most of all, Lord, we thank you for Jesus who made it all possible because of his life, his teaching, his death on the cross, and his resurrection to life so that we might know the power of the resurrection, not just for eternity, but for today. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.